Hello Internet, and welcome to this special viewer request episode of Macon. While we all wait for Season 2 of Macon, which will be focusing on outer space stuff, this episode stems from a comment I made in my very first Macon Planet tutorial, Macon Planet Mercury with Video Copilot Orb or VC Element 3D. At around the 8 minutes 35 second mark, I say, Incidentally, I have a way of adding atmospheres to an Element 3D planet, but then Orb came out and it didn't seem worth making a tutorial for that. If you want me to do so, leave a note in the comments. So, a couple of months go by, and then... And here we are. I know Andrew Kramer has shown how to add an atmosphere glow in his own element tutorials, but that's for more static shots of the planet. This method will allow you to fly the camera all around, and have the atmosphere behave with shadows appropriately. Let's just jump straight in. Here we are in After Effects, and I've got my comp already set up, and a solid ready for a VC element. I'm going to add an atmosphere to Mercury, but obviously I could have used Earth or any other planet's textures. If you want to see how I get any of my textures, Google, then check out any of the other Making Planet tutorials. The textures I'm using are included in the project file link below. So, first things first, I need to add element, and then I'll go straight into the custom texture maps area and set my textures to some separate custom layers. and then I'll go to Scene Setup, and we'll create a sphere. Now, Element doesn't have a render perfect option like C4D. If I zoom in, you can see what I mean. See, the sphere is made up of lines? Let's just up the segments count to about 96. Although, honestly, I've no idea why 96. I'll have learned that from somewhere. It could be pretty much anything. And now in our default texture, let's start adding our custom layers. Diffuse takes our straight image, Normal takes the normal, Occlusion has the ambient occlusion, and Glossiness goes in the specular. And let's drop the normal down to minus 24. And if we scroll down a bit, set a pinky colour for reflectivity and its intensity to 7%. And that's it, we can leave Elements Editor for the moment. And in the Effects Controls, expand World Transform and create a World Transform Null. And select the new Null layer, hit Enter and rename it Planet Null. And before we go any further, let's also create our Sunlight. Go to Layer, New, Light. Make it a white parallel light, 100%, and hit OK. Making sure it's selected, hit enter and rename it Sun Light, and expand its properties. And now select our Planet Null layer and hit P to expose the 3D position. And using the light's point of interest pick whip, select the Null's position properties. So now, wherever we position our Sun, it will always point to the planet. In our Element Planets effects, expand the Render Settings and the Physical Environment Settings. Set the Exposure to 1.5, and the Lighting Influence to 100%. Now making sure the Element Planet layer is selected, let's duplicate it, either by going to Edit, Duplicate, or by holding down Control and tapping the D key. Hit Enter and rename this layer Element Atmosphere. Because we've duplicated the layer after making our null, the element is also connected to the same null, which is pretty handy. Expand Group 1 and Particle Look, and let's increase our particle size. I could just type something in, like 10.1, but it means if I adjust the planet's radius, I'll also have to change this value. So instead, on the timeline, expand Element Planet's Effects Settings until you can see that layer's Particle Look Size. And now holding down the Alt key, Click on the Atmosphere Size stopwatch, and use the Pick Whip to link the planet's size value. Edit the new expression, and at the end, type times 1.01. .01. So my atmosphere layer will now always be 1% larger than my planet. If I toggle the atmosphere layer on and off, you can see a tiny difference. One last thing to do, let's create a new solid. 100 by 100 pixels is fine and make it 50% grey. 
I do this by dragging the color picker over to the left and then typing 50% in the B for brightness space. Drag this layer to the bottom of your comp, name it something like Atmos Tex and turn it off. In the effects settings for element atmosphere, expand the custom layers and set our new Atmos Tex layer as one of the custom layers. And now let's go into that layers element editor and create a new shader by right clicking in the C materials box and selecting new shader. And now drag it onto our sphere to replace the mercury shader. Switch the drop down from physical shader to standard shader. Now to make it look thin in the middle and strong around the outside in the basic settings set the diffuse color to black and the specular to zero. In the reflection settings set the intensity to 100% and the Fresnel to 1 and the bias to about 0.61. It all looks a bit shiny so let's go up to our environment button and using the drop down select the custom layer pointing to our grey Atmos solid and leave the editor. Expand the render settings and using the tint option pick a colour we want for the atmosphere. And set the layers transfer mode to screen. Now it's a little sharp so let's set a camera lens blur. Which you can find in effect, blur and sharpen, camera lens blur. And leave it at the default 5 pixels. And then that's it. The trick works because the grey solid is creating a reflectionless void and the Fresnel properties in the reflection are giving me that outer ring. I didn't make this tutorial to begin with because as I was prepping the first season of making, Video Copilot introduced Orb. But I can see how having the ability to do this in Element is useful too. And the same atmosphere trick could be used to add Star Trek like shields and that sort of thing. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you like what I do, then click subscribe so you'll be alerted when my next vid is released.